General Motors recently issued a recall for Chevy Bolt batteries because there have been some battery fires, and there's a fair amount of concern about that. And they found that there were some rare manufacturing defects that led to the fires, so they're going to replace those. But the recall and the fires also led to an interesting discussion amongst battery experts about how to increase safety in EV batteries. So I'm going to talk to Dr. Kai Philip Carries of Accur Battery uh, Intelligence, and he joins us from Dusseldorf, Germany. Welcome to the interview, Kai Philip. Hi, Marco. Well, look, what's your take on the Chevy Bolt fires and, and the recall? Yeah, it's it's a it's a punch, I want to say, to the to the scale up of of EVs around the world, um, as both General Motors, but also Hyundai and Kia had to recall hundreds of thousands of vehicles for safety issues. And of course, it's always bad if we feel that a new technology that we desperately need doesn't, you know, um, fulfill the criteria that we've put to it, and now. We need to make sure that this doesn't happen again. So your company is, is battery monitoring and battery uh, intelligence. Uh, is better battery monitoring in the electric vehicle while it's charging? Is, is that a part of the solution? I think it, it's one part. There are, of course, other ones. Um, I think battery monitoring and diagnostics is like the, the second net that you have uh, for, for safety, of course, the first priority must be production quality and system design. Um, that's really where you have the largest impact on you know, the safety and also the, the quality of those batteries in the long term. The next one is to operate it in the right way. So to not overcharge the battery, to not operate it at too low temperatures. And although that seems self-explaining, we see it in the field way too often. So there's you know, a lot of work to be done also in this part. And I think battery analytics that detect anomalies, for example, are like the third part that you know, is able to prevent something that has already happened. So we already have a bad cell, but now we want to, uh, uh, we want to stop it from becoming dangerous. Are there not systems, uh, safety systems built into the EVs already, Kai Philip? And I'm, I was thinking that, so this is an overheating issue. It, they, it's not like they spontaneously burst into flames. They overheat and then they, and then they catch fire. Uh, is it not possible to design in systems that uh, detect the rising temperature and then either isolate that module or, or maybe you know, take some action to cool it down, something like that? So I guess in the case of the uh, bolt fires, the rising temperatures were really caused by already an internal short and an internal short that has been there, you, you don't stop that. So a battery that is going through a thermal runaway, there's no way of stopping that. And there are some passive safety measurements that, you, that prevent a propagation from one battery cell to the next, to the next, to the next. Um, this is mostly about system design. Um, and the other thing is the onboard safety systems that we have, like the battery management system, they're very limited in what they can do. So it's an electronic sensor that basically tracks, is the voltage higher than a threshold? Yes or no? That's the intelligence they have on there. While if you go to a cloud-based solution, that allows you to compare the behavior of one cell to that of millions of others, you know, over their whole lifetime, and just just gives you so much more information um, to, to to make long term predictions also, and not just say, oh, this battery will burn in ten seconds because that's too late. We need to know it before. So it sounds like there are some potential uh, solutions on, on that side. Now, you and I have, in previous interviews, talked about different battery chemistries. And I understand that solid state uh, is potentially a safer uh, uh, design and, and technology. Uh, it, might that be a solution? Well, solid state has some uh, benefits in terms of safety. It takes away the uh, organic and highly flammable uh, electrolyte out of the battery cell. 
but solid state alone, you know, is not the silver bullet. There's still a whole, we need a whole system of safety layers of safety measurements around the battery cell to make sure that, you know, it can be operated over 15, maybe 20 years in a safe way. Um, exchanging the electrolyte from liquid to solid, you know, can have benefits, but it won't solve all the issues that we have. Are, are you confident and is the battery industry confident that it can resolve these safety issues? I think yes. I think there are some incredibly smart people and dedicated people working at all these companies, at all these, in all these engineering departments. And we also have to take into account that we are looking at an unprecedented scale up of production capacities of batteries. So we're ramping up at lightning speed. And I think it's, it's not really, um, I think it's relatively likely that something like the GM recalls or the LG recalls, I mean, the batteries come from LG, uh, would happen over time. I mean, at the moment we're looking at a worldwide production capacity of 500 gigawatt hours per year. And if you calculate that down into cells, that's trillions of battery cells. So even if you have a very, very, very rare production error, you know, even if it's one in a million, we're still looking at 10,000 of these events every year. And so we need to make sure that we not just rely on the production quality, but also build resilient systems, you know, add the monitoring that is needed to keep it safe and have, you know, a holistic view on, on, on the safety topic. Is it fair to say, uh, Kai Philip, that given how young this industry is, that some of these growing pains were probably inevitable? And what do you think? You know, as an engineer uh, who's, you know, concerned about, you know, the, the products that we build and the people that use them and also the reputation of the industry, I, I think, you know, a recall of that size, I hope that it wouldn't have to be <laughs> necessary, you know, a necessary result of, of, of the stage that we're in in the battery business. I do hope that it's a wake up call to all the companies involved in it to, to, to really reassess if they have put safety, if they have given safety the right priority. Uh, but of course, you know, if we're looking at an industry where basically every 18 to 24 months, the product completely changes, like new cell chemistry, new form factor, new, new separators and all these things. And it's, it's super tough to build a good battery. That's, that's not the question. But then again, it's, it's really about dedicating yourself to building safe products, maybe even if it costs a fraction of a cent more. Right. Great. Kai Philip, always appreciate your insights. Thank you very much.